welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today let us discuss about copd management in emergency department copd is a type of uh, obstructive airway disease we have to differentiate differentiate it from the asthma asthma is a uh, obstructive disease but it is reversible copd is an obstructive disease but it is irreversible it's a progressive disease it's a common preventable and treatable disease that is characterized by persistent respiratory symptoms that is very important throughout the year patient will have symptoms and air flow air flow limitations air flow obstruction can lead to air flow limitation it is it is uh, mainly due to the uh, smoking or dust or due to any exposure to smoke all these things can be uh, pre existing condition which can lead to copd it can this disease can have a mixture of small airway disease and large airway disease so both small airway and large airways are involved in copd whereas in asthma only uh, larger airways are involved that is a main difference between copd and asthma asthma is a Uh, intermittent disease copd is a progressive disease asthma is a disease of mainly larger airways copd is mainly a disease of smaller airways now we can see the changes uh, pathological changes in copd it mainly affects smaller airways there will be hypertrophy of, of mucus producing glands goblet cell hyperplasia ciliary cells reduced with sluggish movement mucosal edema hypertrophy of smooth muscles of bronchus reduced caliber of air spaces these are the major changes seen in uh, copd now types of copd if you see one is chronic bronchitis other one is emphysema these these are the two important changes other last one is small airway obstruction chronic bronchitis by definition chronic cough and expectoration most of the days at least 3 months for last two consecutive years that is very very important emphysema is an abnormal and permanent enlargement of distal air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles accompanied by destruction of their walls so permanent dilatation and destruction of alveoli occurs here whereas in chronic bronchitis it predominantly a clinical uh, definition chronic cough expectoration 3 months for last two years so here you can see difference between emphysema and uh, bronchitis bronchitis is a predominantly involvement of the airway that is inflamed increased mucus secretion emphysema is dilatation destruction of alveoli so there is a major difference between these two types of diseases however the clinical findings are similar but uh, chronic bronchitis is predominantly a cough uh, disease emphysema is predominantly a breathlessness disease Now we can see the difference between emphysema and chronic bronchitis emphysema predominant is pink puffer less cyanosis marked dyspnea blue blotter is bron- bronchitis predominantly uh, marked cyanosis peripheral edema blotter so pink puffer and blue blotter breathlessness is severe in uh, emphysema cough is severe in uh, bronchitis sputum production is severe in uh, bronchitis cyanosis is early in bronchitis pulmonary hypertension is early in bronchitis right ventricular failure is early in bronchitis uh, peripheral edema is early in bronchitis this is mainly due to one, one is right ventricular failure and other one is protein loss through the sputum respiratory failure early in bronchitis chest x ray very classical for emphysema hyper inflated lung fields that means heart is tubular diaphragms are pushed down the rib spaces are widened pulmonary function test in both conditions you can get airway obstruction obstruction with lesser re- reversibility we'll see the pulmonary function test afterwards now x ray you can see here more black color lungs diaphragm is pushed down heart is like a tube tubular heart and rib spaces are very wide these are the classical findings of x ray now pulmonary function test most important thing a normal doctor should know is fev1 
FEV1 is reduced in COPD and asthma. Both it is reduced. But the reversibility, reversibility means after giving nebulization, if FEV1 reverses more than 15 percent, it is asthma. If it is less than 15 percent, then it is a irreversible condition or COPD. So, this is the single most investigation which can tell you whether it is a asthma or COPD. Symptoms are uh, there because uh, symptoms, symptom wise asthma uh, is an intermittent in between attacks patient is absolutely normal whereas COPD throughout the year patient will have symptoms and they are predominantly smokers whereas asthma is not a smoker it starts from the younger age itself. Now, there is a, st a staging system by uh, global initiative for chronic obstructive lung disease that is gold classification or gold staging. Stage 1 mild, stage 2 moderate, stage 3 severe, stage 4 very severe. This all depends upon the FPV1, uh, uh, FPV1 values. So, you can see here FPV1 value more than 80 percent is normal or if the patient is having symptoms of COPD with FPV1 more than 80, it is mild. 50 to 80 percent, it is moderate. 30 to 50 percent, it is severe less than 30 percent it is very severe. This is gold classification for COPD for severity uh, staging. Now, most of the exacerbation uh, in COPD like patient come to emergency room with acute breathlessness that is due to the infection. It can be due to viral infection and it can be due to bacterial infection. When we talk about a bacterial infection in the lungs, normally it is streptococci in any patient, but in a patient who is having pre-existing lung disease, it can also be due to streptococci, but there are other uh, organisms which are very common uh, which can in COPD which, which can be Haemophilus, Moroxella, Chlamydia, Mycoplasma, other type of respiratory viruses and severe exacerbation can even be due to Pseudomonas and other gram negative Hendrick bacilli, Klebsiella, or other things. Now, we will talk about LTOT. LTOT is a long term oxygen therapy. So, most of these patients, uh, COPD patients, they have chronic airway obstruction and that may lead to pulmonary hypertension, that is due to hypoxemia induced endothelial damage, and this endothelial damage ultimately produces uh, vascular congestion and vascular hypertension that lead to pulmonary hypertension. So, if we can give continuous oxygen during uh, the stable periods, uh, not in acute condition uh, when, at, when they are at home, if they are continuously giving oxygen, uh, it can um, prevent this pulmonary hypertension. Uh, it is not give the long term oxygen therapy is not given to improve the oxygenation in patient. It is uh, given to prevent the damages produced by the hypoxia in the pulmonary endothelium, pulmonary vascular endothelium. So, 16 hours we have to give 2 to 4 liters per minute to achieve a PaO2 more than 60 millimeter of mercury, that is enough. So, low dose oxygen to be given continuously for nearly 16 hours is LTOT. So, that is very important in patients with any chronic lung disease like uh, COPD, ILD or whatever it is. Now, most of the time patients come to emergency room with acute infective exacerbation in COPD. So, always take care of the patient's airway, breathing, circulation that pattern is most important, that treatment pattern is most important in emergency room. So, th most of these patients can have airway problem, patient can have breathing problem, patient can have a circulatory problem like a, a BP fall. Uh, oxygen uh, should be started initially with uh, high flow oxygen. Later, we can reduce the oxygen to uh, maintain a saturation of 85 to 92 percentage. So, that can be given uh, in initially, then it can be uh, titrated. Initially, high flow oxygen can be given and titrated down uh, very fast and maintain a saturation of 85 percent to 92 percent. Now, we can talk about hypoxic respiratory drive that is very important because uh, in most of these patients when we give high flow oxygen, there is a chance of a respiratory arrest. 
So, supplemental octo removes a COPD patient's hypoxic respiratory drive causing hypoventilation which causes higher carbon dioxide levels and apnea. So, this is uh, possible. So, try to avoid uh, giving high flow oxygen in a patient who is having stable COPD. But in emergency, we have to give high flow oxygen and maintain a saturation above 85 to 90. 85 to 90 is the uh, safe level of uh, uh, oxygen in this type of patients. Now, next one is uh, nebulization. We can give sal levosalbutamol with epatropium bromide. Levosalbutamol 2.5 milligram nebulization with epatropium can be given. Salbutamol mainly act in the larger airways, epatropium act in the mainly in the smaller airways. So, these two combinations can be given in patients who is having acute COPD. We can give 2 to 3 times uh, nebulization. Then one new drug of uh, uh, drug is available that is uh, rivafenacin that is an inhalation route that can be given as an inhalation route. That is an alternative or a new drug available, but uh, the mostly available combination is levosalbutamol with ipatropium bromide combination. It can be given as nebulization or meter dose inhalation or uh, any other device can be used. Other main treatment aspects are antibiotics. Since it is an infective pathology, we have to give antibiotic. The most important antibiotic is quinolone, levofloxin or uh, uh, any other respiratory quinolone like moxifloxin can be given or amoxiclavil amoxiclavilinic acid can also be given. Steroid also can be given because it is an inflammatory condition, but the role of steroids is not like in asthma. Asthma, it is a, there is a definitive role, but here we can give, it may be helpful. Other important thing is any patient who is having uh, COPD or asthma, if they are not improving with simple oxygen mask or oxygen devices, we can use non-invasive ventilation. If the respiratory rate is 25 per minute, mild to moderate respiratory acidosis, hypercarbia, all these things we can give. If the patient is having low GCS, severe vomiting and immediate intubation, we have to avoid non-invasive ventilation. Now, if the patient is uh, agitated, uh, we can give Dexmed during the BiPAP ventilation. Ketamine also can be tried. If the patient uh, is not tolerating the mask, either we can give Dexmed or Ketamine or we can go for high flow nasal cannula therapy. That is an alternative for COPD, sorry, alternative for BiPAP ventilation in COPD, but it is not a good choice. Now, mechanical ventilations are, mechanical ventilation is in, in, in indicated in severe respiratory failure, respiratory rate more than 35, hypercarbia, acidosis, respiratory arrest, altered mental status, hypotension, cardiac failure, shock and non-invasive ventilation failure. Now, intubation is required in many patients who is not improving with uh, BiPAP ventilation. When we are considering intubation, there are some steps to be followed. I am not going to all the steps. Consider a larger size tube and you have to think about auto peep also in this patient. Auto peep can be problematic because it can reduce the venous return uh, to the heart. It can produce hypotension in many patients with COPD. Another important aspect is uh, ketamine with propofol during uh, intubation as an induction agent. So, it is called as ketofol. You can refer this charts for the details. Other important things, uh, we have to advise the patient to stop smoking. We have to advise the patient to take vaccination against COVID-19 and other uh, influenza or pneumococcal vaccine. We have to give a high protein diet, low carbohydrate diet and we have to give vitamin D supplements. Potassium should be corrected during the treatment and all other take, uh, things should be taken care in ICU. So, we have discussed about one of the most important and common problem in emergency room that is COPD with acute infective exacerbation. We have to take care of patient's airway, breathing, circulation. We have to give oxygenation, but try to maintain oxygen saturation uh, uh, in uh, 85 to 90 percent. Otherwise, patient may go to apnic, uh, apnea, apnea because of uh, high oxygen, uh, uh, high, high oxygenation in the blood. So we have to be very careful in over oxygenation in patients with COPD. And other things are antibiotics are very important. Steroids can be given, and many patients require uh, BiPAP ventilation. Some may require mechanical ventilation. Thank you.